we're on with a, another solar project, a solar tracking gate. So it's hinged at one end and you have a wheel halfway, three quarters of the way up the other end and it goes round in a quadrant. So we've got the pivot here with big ground anchor. That's a five inch pipe, thick wall pipe. And it was actually one of the uprights of the wind turbine shown in that old footage from years ago. I think I loaded it about six months ago. I can't remember what it's called, but there's an um, explanation of an old turbine that I made years ago. And some very old footage, which was um, fairly entertaining. Anyway, here's the ground anchors. And the main just trying to see whether you could see. This bit goes in the ground about two and a half feet and these ground anchors will be just below the surface. Welded on, covered in bitumen paint. So I've bored the hole. So we'll just see if we can uh, ease this without excess stress. Just find that cable. get the idea and these will be dug in and that's the pivot and once everything's settled it will be solid and uh, no concrete which is a good idea so that's the standard pivot and we're on heavy clay here so once it's dug in not a problem now the pivot what we're going to do, well, it's got to be cheap and uh, it's got to be heavy duty. So I've had this big old bearing and a two inch shaft. It's been laid in the corner of the tractor shed for 20 years. So I thought this will do. And it's a similar idea to uh, what we've done on the solar boom. So that's a loose fit in there like that. And the shoulder of the bearing sits on this box section. No problem. I mean it's been sat in the, the tractor shed for so long it had virtually seized up. I'd spent 10 minutes with a bit of diesel and then some oil to get it moved properly but it doesn't matter because it could be as rusty as anything inside as long as it's greased because all it's going to do is move from there to there and back again every 24 hours so as long as it's fairly smooth it'll be fine and this is a self-aligning bearing so any inaccuracies and this will align itself up this whole frame this bodywork will move relative to the bearing race might take a bit of grief to get it moving first time but uh, it'll be fine so you've got the theory there there's a good solid pivot and a bearing to support the end of quite a large boom and the boom as you'll see 10 meters long so it'll take 10 250 watt panels but we're getting on with building a solar boom and a mate of mine years ago had a triumph motorcycle rebuild general improve and use project and he called it Project 9, so this is Solar Project 9. And there's the bearing on the solar boom. So this is, so for Project 9 we have a very similar uh, arrangement. So here's the boom under construction two-inch box section here we are and of course this is the area where the sawmill was in the sawmill videos so let's just zoom in to uh, where we've got the bearing mount so the bearing will bolt there and this plate here is set 
at such a position that the outside of that thick wall tube, which is the upright, which of course will be uh, leveled up and plumbed up before we uh, finally put it in position. The outside of that will be about three quarters of an inch away from here. So we can put a piece of timber there and then we can put another rail here. So once the end supported on a wheel, if you've got some inaccuracies in the ground, the post can effectively move in that slot. So all you've got is downward pressure here supported by the bearing and any, any inaccuracy can be taken up with the post moving like this. Don't want to stress anything out more than uh, necessary. Well, of course, there's loads of info about uh, wind and solar electricity and, and tracking and batteries and inverters, etc., all in here. But let's just show you uh, um, bits about tracking. Let's just zoom in. A bit too far. That's the solar boom that we've we saw the bearing on. That is a almost a turntable with a pivot in the middle yeah and here that's another form of tracking which we've covered before and there that little bit there is the mark three timer just takes that it's only about two inches square and that there is a forward and reversing relay to swap the dc over so that the motor goes backwards but that just runs 24 hours a day and um, drives all the track in. So here's the drive mechanism. Now this is a wheelchair motor, um, magnet, 24 volts. Um, when I got it, I was donated this by uh, Simon, who uh, along with family come to uh, the Eco Lodge from time to time and uh, he brought me two of these with the wheels on so the wheels about that size quite nice wheels actually because they're uh, that spongy but um, flat proof which is excellent but um, just experimental wise it's 24 volt DC and with this solar boom you don't actually need that much power because the leverage is 15 foot leverage so this with a 12 volt battery on 12 volts DC I put the wheel on and counted it counted the revs and it did one rev every second right that's too fast now because I've used the pivot uh, one of the pivot poles from one of the old turbines this Radcom box here was the winch box that you saw in the video so it had been sat on the bottom of the pole for 15, 18 years, something like that so it's fairly seized up, had to have it apart clean all the bearings up it could do with some new seals which it will get um, it's 40 to 1 so that means that the output of that shaft would be uh, one rev every 40 seconds which is probably pretty good and as you notice it's it's a hollow output shaft and that will take a 30 mil shaft so we can have a 30 mil shaft coming out of here with a support bearing and a wheel on the end so it's relatively easy and unlike the um, the solar boom where we've got chains and everything, this won't need chains, I'm hoping. I mean, we can always move the position of the motor and put a chain between uh, sprocket on there and sprocket on there and reduce the speed down to uh, one rev every 80 seconds quite easily. But I suspect we won't need to. So it doesn't matter which way you attach these wires with a permanent magnet, it just turn them round and the motor goes backwards.
and of course thanks to Simon for this uh, this motor that's going to drive the uh, the Solar Gate Project 9. Much appreciated. All these sorts of things they they go on the shelf and they're toys really, but it's great. You have the bits there, you can do it. It's like that big bearing. It was there, it was surplus from when I did the pivot on the um, on the turbine tower. It was second hand then and it sat there and you go, well that's a huge bearing to use for this job, but it's there and I haven't paid anything for it and you might as well use it. And whilst we're here, just look at this. This was a uh, broken solar panel with broken glass. And I went down the auto paint shop, vehicle refinishers, and I bought some uh, twin pack car lacquer. Very hard it is, but it seems to take a while to go off and what it's done is I left it overnight and it's soaked into all the cracks and unfortunately I don't think I can uh, oh, I can it's soaked into all the cracks and glued them all together and stopped all those little reflections And of course, with the uh, with the automotive trade, they want the lacquer to be very clear, and um, they want the colour to show through, and and to be UV proof, and temperature proof. Because you leave a car out in the hot sun, if it's black, it'll get roasting, and you don't want the lacquer to start to break down or peel off. So, I'm hoping this will be a fairly durable solution. And that's what I used. Seems to work. 